When we were first starting out, I told Raquel the one cardinal rule of this nasty business we call show. There are three T's in entertainment. Talent, teeth, and tits. Now Raquel's only six, so she's only fully developed in the talent department. Now I don't want to state my case here, nor do I want to whine, but it must be said, it's not easy being a single mother. I mean, especially at my age. I mean, I was 19 when I had her. I have no family to speak of to lend a hand raising her. As for being a single mommy, the gentleman in question seemed to think of his role largely in terms of anonymous sperm donation. The silence from that man is deafening, and to be fair, I'm not sure where he is. But what it comes down to is money, right? Stephanie is an abusive mother, bound and determined to climb the showbiz ladder on the back of her six-year-old daughter, Raquel. It seems Stephanie is willing to sacrifice everything, even if it means pushing her daughter into the hands of a pedophile. Age of Consent by Peter Morris. With some proper discipline and training, I could put Raquel's natural maturity and outgoingness to good use. So I made the decision. I quit my job to focus on Raquel's career, although it must be said, as her agent and manager, I'll always be working harder than she does. But you have no idea how energized I am. I am completely happy spending my days teaching Raquel to sing and dance. I finally feel like a mother. With only minimum coaching from me, she's a natural. Raquel got cast as the littlest darling sibling in Peter Pan. I have taught her to steal a scene so gracefully you don't even see her doing it. A chill went over me as I stood in the wings. Raquel waited to enter. I didn't even smile as I leaned down and whispered, T and T, Raquel. She just looks up at me and says, Teeth and tits, mom, teeth and tits. And so she grins and thrusts and enters, and all eyes are on her. Princess Raquel and I are currently not speaking. She'll come around, anticipating their misbehavior as part of the training. So that way, when it does occur, you just starve them into submission. I don't know what Princess R had to eat today, but there's no food in the house. I don't feel guilty. Give that girl an inch and she takes a mile. You could say she's spoiled, but if I have spoiled her, it's only because it's part of the training. You see, I take Raquel to these places that are too Lottie da for us, so that, that way she acquires a taste for it, so that then she has to work harder for the rest of her life to satisfy that craving. She'll be a much more eager performer if she has to sink for her supper, essentially. But she's been so gloomy lately, I suspect it's overwork, only I maintain a far more punishing schedule than she does. I'm the one who's responsible for you appointment, every meet and greet, every audition that she ruins for us because I will take Raquel into our first audition of the day and she'll already be in a bad mood. And we get to these little standoffs and it just feeds on itself and gets worse and worse and that way she'll ruin the audition. And that makes me livid. Like today. Today was unforgivable really. They're changing casts right and they miss and you have no idea how hard I fought to get the audition. I coached Raquel into perfect poignancy with choreography and everything. You know the show. So I told Raquel, I said, I don't want there to be a dry seat in that audience when you're through. Make them weep. I gave her a Chinese bird. I pushed her on stage and she was spellbinding. Little hairs on the back of my neck standing up and I realized Raquel does honestly, honestly have what it takes until the last verse when she actually started to cry and it was a nice effect but then she stopped singing and she started crying, mommy, mommy, you just evaporated that magic. It's clear she's not a pro but if she can't do it now, when is she going to do it? So I pulled her aside and I said, Raquel, I can't have you calling me mommy in front of all these professionals. Stop letting me down and maybe I'll want to be your mommy, you spiteful little bitch. And she says, fine, I don't want to call you mommy anymore. So I slapped her across the face and she fell over. She didn't even cry. I mean, I am proving she has nerves of steel because she didn't even bat an eyelid. Six 
years old. Can you believe it? And the only thing that runs through my mind is she doesn't even have hormones in her yet. I might need to have to put her down for the public good because she's only six. And her latest technique for domestic terrorism, wetting the bed. It's the third time this week, so I'm simply refusing to change sheets. Because as far as I'm concerned, little girls have made their bed to lie in. For the first time, I'm thinking it might be possible. Our dreams might finally come true. Raquel and I have learned that there is a god and his name is Desmond Marotti. We were sitting in a park when a very old, distinguished looking man came strolling up and started looking at Raquel. And she didn't even look her best. That star quality. And he says, Madam, you have a beautiful daughter. And he reaches into the pocket of the business coat, extracts a card. Desmond Roddy, director, film and television. I think this might be the answer to our prayers. He's a bloody director. And before I even knew it, Raquel got cast as a feature role in a commercial. And Desmond, well, He's so attentive to Raquel and the money. Let's just say the contract was very, very generous. The first time we stepped into the studio, I had to fill out a whole sheaf of forms until I got to the page that said consent, as in parental consent. Imagine raising your child so well that they finally become what you want. I had been so angry with Raquel with the talking back and the pissing, but now she's like a perfect dream of obedience. It's like she finally understood what I wanted from her. The next time we filled with Desmond, she didn't say a word, apart from her lines. It's like she finally understood what I wanted from her. And Desmond, well, he's perfectly enchanted with his little leading lady. So I took Raquel home and I said, I know you get it in your head to be a little most contrary, but don't you dare. Desmond can make us rich. So he tells you to jump, you say, how high? She didn't say anything, didn't even nod. But I knew she understood. Next, we had Raquel filming in Tuscany. They even flew me out. Raquel flew business class with Desmond and I sat in economy. It's all right. I said to Desmond as we stood on the terrace, Raquel taking a bit too long in the bath. Think she's a star now. I said to Desmond, this is a country for romance. A passionate man like you, I know you feel it. And he says, passion is the air I breathe. And Raquel turned up and started looking at us that same way she has been these past few days, kind of accusatory, popping her eyes out at you. The next morning, they decided not to film for some reason. Desmond turned up with a little hamper in hand and said, where's Raquel? She was hiding, so we fetched her out. And he says, little lady, I've come to invite you to a picnic. She seemed a bit reluctant, and off they went. I watched them walk down to his car, the picnic hamper in his hand, and Raquel reaching up to clench his pinky finger. And I realized, he's done so much. I know, I'll never be able to forget this man, and Raquel won't either. As for now, you have no idea how nice it is to be alone. Thank you.